Today I will be building a PVC hydroponic system to grow my own lettuce, herbs, and other greens in my basement. These systems are also sometimes referred to as a nutrient film technique or NFT system. I will leave a list of materials and dimensions in the description. For this system, I will be using four 5-foot sections of PVC drain pipe, capped off and connected to the next pipe in series. The water will flow in on the first pipe and make its way to the fourth pipe where it will exit and return to the reservoir. It will allow for 34 plants. I have picked up two 10 foot long sections of 4 inch PVC drain pipe at the local hardware store for about 15 bucks a piece. These have a belled end on them that I will need to cut off. Each pipe will then be cut in half giving me roughly four 5 foot sections of growing space. I have 4 inch end caps that I will drill holes into in order to connect the pipes together. I want to drill the holes for the grommets about an inch from the bottom of the cap. This height will set the height of the water in our system. You do not want to set the water height too high. The roots of the plants will need the airspace in order to absorb oxygen to prevent the roots from rotting. This is critical when growing in hydroponics. These are 1 inch grommets that give us the perfect fit for 3 quarter inch PVC pipe that I will use to connect the grow tubes together. A 1 and a half inch hole saw is used for the grommet holes. If you line up the hole with the writing on the tube, they should all be indexed. We are just test fitting right now, not gluing, so it's not super important to get them lined up perfectly. Spread the pipes out to get an idea how far you would like them apart. I'm planning on using a 2 foot deep shelf so each pipe will be spaced roughly 6 inches apart measuring center on center. I will cut 6 inch long pieces of my 3 quarter inch pipe and use 90 degree elbows to connect them. I'm not using PVC cement on these just yet, in case I need to adjust the spacing later. Now that we have the pipes connected, we will mark out and cut the holes for the net cups. I used a tape measure and marked off holes 6 inches apart. This is kind of an experiment on the spacing. I have seen some systems with tight spacing which allows for more plants, but I want to make sure mine aren't crowded and will have good airflow and room to grow. I am going to offset the hole spacing by 3 inches on every other pipe to give the plants a little bit more room to spread out. Since I'm using a 2 inch net cup, I need to use a 2 inch hole saw. This is important to make sure you don't cut the hole too big. The net cups have a lip on them that needs to rest on the PVC pipe. So if you decide to use a larger or smaller net cup, use the appropriate hole saw. It's not a bad idea to drill a test hole on some scrap wood or plastic you have lying around to ensure you have a good fit. Once your holes are all drilled, clean them up using a razor blade or trimming tool like I am. Sandpaper would probably work too. This smooths out the edges to give a clean look and a tight fitment, which is especially important on the holes that use grommets. This helps prevent leaks. The inlet for the water tube will be placed near the top of the pipe. I drilled a hole and used a smaller grommet that fits my 3 8 pump hose. You could get away with not using a grommet here but I like the fact that it holds the tube nice and tight. Now would be a good time to clean the pipes. I vacuumed as much as I could and then rinsed them outside with the garden hose. Apply PVC cement to the caps and the pipe and then connect them together. Give them a good twist to help spread the cement creating a good bond. Keep in mind the orientation of the inlet and outlet holes. Don't over apply the PVC cement. We do not want excess cement pushed into our system. I've read up a bunch whether or not it's a good idea to use cement in a hydroponic system. Some people are against it due to concerns about the chemicals leaching into the water. But the general consensus is PVC cement is used in our home plumbing systems and is considered safe. Now it's time to build the shelf. I was tempted to buy a pre-made shelf or to build one out of PVC piping. But surprisingly the 2x4s were the cheaper option at this time in my area, so I'll just make my own. 
I'm going to build a shelf that's 6 foot 6 inches high, 4 feet wide, and 2 feet deep. I don't mind if there's a few inches of overhang on either side with the PVC tubes. I'm going to use 8 foot long 2x4s to make it easy to cut and to minimize the waste. My plan is to build three 2x4 boxes that will act as the shelves, then attach them to the four 6 foot 6 legs. The excess 2 foot long pieces will be used as center braces for the shelving boxes. These dimensions best utilize the space I'm putting my shelf in and give me additional room if I want to add another set of growing pipes in the future. First I'll start off by cutting the four 8 foot long boards into my shelf legs. Next I'm cutting three of the 8 foot long boards in half for my shelf box. And finally, cutting the last two 8 foot long boards into 2 foot sections for the box ends and center brace. Now I'll make the three shelves. I'll be taking two of the 4 foot long sections and two 2 foot sections for the sides of the box. Then I'll use one 2 foot section for the center support. I used a carpenter square to square off my corners. It is a good idea to drill a pilot hole in the wood before driving the screw in. This will help prevent the wood from splitting. I used two screws at each joint. After the shelves are built, you may want to do the final assembly where the shelf will be placed. I don't think this will fit through a doorway if you built it and then tried moving it after. This may be a little hard to assemble by yourself, but I think the easiest way is to attach the legs to the top shelf with one screw, then add the middle shelf ensuring you keep it square, screw it in, then finally add the bottom shelf. After that you can go back in and add a second screw for additional strength. Make sure you're attaching the legs to the long sides of the shelf, not the end. You may run into clearance issues if you add the legs to the end. I'm test fitting my pipes onto the shelf now. If you're happy with the spacing, you can add the PVC cement to the elbow joints now. After the shelf is all put together and in place, I'm going to attach the lighting. For this system, I used four of the Barina four foot long full spectrum grow lights. Each light is 42 watts. I have used these lights to grow microgreens and to start seedlings before and they work well. Having one LED light bar per grow tube should give us more than enough light coverage. I simply hung the lights with some zip ties, then used the provided linking cables to connect them all in series. Just a note from the future here, four lights were giving me a bit of light burn on my lettuce leaves, so I'm currently running three lights which is working just fine. The fixed light height has not been an issue and my lettuce seedlings are not stretching at all when growing. Add the drain pipe down to the reservoir. I'm just using a 27 gallon food safe plastic bin from the hardware store. Once you get the return pipe how you want it, mark the lid and drill a hole for it to enter into the reservoir. And then drill a hole for the pump hose to exit and flow up to our inlet pipe. I used a one and a quarter inch hole saw for the return hole and seven eighths inch for the pump hose. Try to have your return pipe near the top of the reservoir. You don't want the return pipe to be submerged in water. The return water falling into the reservoir also helps aerate the system. Fill up the reservoir and add the heart of the system, the pump. I'm using the Eco 396 gallon per hour. Depending on the height you plan on pumping the water up to will help determine the gallons per hour you need from your pump. You need higher gallons per hour, the higher you're trying to pump up the water. This pump is a bit overkill, so I added a ball valve to the hose to regulate the water flow. Next, I'm going to check the pH of the water. You can use a digital tester like this one, or a basic chemical test kit. Around six pH is good for our system. Depending on what you're growing in the system will determine the ideal pH. For example, lettuce is five and a half to six and a half. Use a pH up or down solution if adjustments are needed. I'm going to add general hydroponics nutrients once I get the plants in here. The amount added will depend on the reservoir size. There are other nutrient brands out there, but general hydroponics has worked well for me and it's cheap. 
Now I'm going to check the PPM, the parts per million of the nutrient solution. Since I'll be growing a few different greens in here, and the lettuce wanting the lower of the PPM of the nutrients than the bok choy or arugula, I'll set the system at the high end for the lettuce and monitor adjusting as needed. And I like to recheck the pH after doing this just to ensure the nutrients haven't messed with the levels. If you don't have a pH tester or PPM meter, I'll leave a link in the description so you can get one. It's not the end of the world if you don't have one. I've grown tons of stuff just fine with straight tap water, never even checking the levels. But if you are growing plants that take a long time to grow, maybe they're expensive plants, you don't want to destroy a crop because you didn't know what the levels were in your system. And if you know what the levels are and you start seeing some deficiencies or some abnormal growing, you can actually make adjustments based on what you know. I added a basic air pump to the system to get more oxygen in the water. Some kits will come with the tubing and the air stones, or they can be bought separately. It's an inexpensive addition that will have great returns on the plant growth. Another cheap thing I added to the system is a light timer. You could turn the lights on and off manually, but it does become a hassle and you will forget. I've, I've forgotten so many times to turn the lights on or off. It's just not worth it to save a couple bucks. I keep the lights in my system on for 16 hours a day. Now if you have plants to add to the system, put them in the net cups. I'm starting some lettuce, bok choy, and arugula from seed. I just add the seeds to some rock wool cubes, put some water in the container, and a dome on top. These things grow quick enough, so within a week your seeds will be sprouting. If you want, put them on a heat map that will help the germination process. If you end up having empty spots, be sure to cover them up so that the light's not entering the system. Light will allow for algae to grow. I'm using these 2 inch clone collars that fit nicely in the net cups. It's quick enough to add one in or remove. It really doesn't matter what you use, you could put a piece of duct tape over the hole. The idea is just to keep as much light out as you can. Well thanks for watching the video, I hope this helped you or will help you with your DIY hydroponic build. Have fun, customize the system to your needs, and just get growing.